Now in this video we're going to use an end channel JFET. I have the J310 and we're going to make an adjustable current source and technically it's a current sink. The load will be on this side of the uh, transistor and so current that's more positive we're going to sink into the uh, component right there as far as the load is concerned. But uh, you can still say current source pretty much any time you set a current for the most part. Now last video we looked at the IDSS. So that's when you connect both the gate and the source directly to ground. We're going to use a trim pot as a variable resistor. We're going to connect uh, one end of the resistive element and the wiper that slides across the resistive element. And that's it. We got the other end of the resistor element just floating. And we could tie that to the wiper, but uh, we're not going to do that. And that's in case the wiper goes bad, you have the full resistance coming back. But in case, last video, both the uh, gate and the source were connected ground. We got the IDSS. That's the maximum current that will flow through the transistor. And for the J310, that's between 24 and 60 milliamps according to a data sheet that I came across. And last video, the one I was using looked like it liked uh, 34 milliamps in that case. This one that I'm going to use in this video, it looks like 38. And so even with the same part number, if you tie the gate and source directly together, that maximum current is going to vary a bit from 24 to 60. So we have the resistor. As we turn the trim pot and add resistance, that's actually going to lower the amount of current that's flowing. The thing is that as long as we have enough voltage, we can keep changing the load and it's going to hold that current. And so we are making an adjustable current source. The current is getting set as long as there's enough voltage. And here we are on the breadboard. So there's the flat side. It's curved on the back there. We got drain, source, and gate. And we're going to start off. We'll just turn the dial. So that's the wiper there where the arrow is pointing. Right now it's pointing towards that orange jumper. So we have basically zero ohms of resistance right there. So uh, it's not perfectly conductive there, but it's close enough to zero resistance uh, to say zero ohms of resistance. The gate going to the negative side of the power supply. Ground, zero volts right there. So we got the uh, positive side there. We are going to attach the uh, multimeter. So first, let's turn it on. We can set it to milliamps right there. And the red probe stays there for everything except for high current. So this meter is pretty easy. The uh, probes there, I got these alligator uh, clips that I clipped onto it. I crimped a jumper wire onto there so that I can just plug it in the board like that. Really simple. And the uh, black one, same thing. Alligator clip, wire there. Can plug it wherever I want. So I'm going to plug it right there. And now we're going to get our IDSS. This is the current when the gate and the source are wired directly together right there. As the component warms up though, it goes down a little bit. Looks like it hits 38. As it warms up, looks like it goes down to uh, like 35 or so I believe so in any case we will zoom back you can see that we're using 5 volts right there and if we increase the voltage it it stays so looks like it bumps it up a little bit but it's also gonna get warmer so it's gonna rapidly drop right there and so I really don't want to go above 5 volts without a load right there so we're going to add an LED I'll push this uh, over so we can see the uh, LED a little more when I add it. And so I'm gonna put the cathode, the uh, short, shorter lead, to where the drain is and the anode up there. That needs to be more positive. And actually, I almost made a mistake that I made before. We need to lower this current before we hook up the LED. So we're still at the uh, drain. The LED is on the other side. It's not connected to anything on the other side. Let's see if I can get about 10, but I'm not going to spend all day. There we go. It's a lot easier to get to 5. So I'm going to stick with that. And uh, we'll zoom. But if you have a specific current you want, you just keep uh, adjusting the resistance until you get it. So now, yep, I am at the drain. Now we come to the LED. It lights up. And you see, we still got 5 milliamps of current. So that's lower current. It's probably not going to get uh, as hot. When I had it passing a little more current, I had to go up in a voltage. But there you can see that uh, it is holding really steady, even as I increase the voltage a lot. So I'm going to go right up to a 10 right now. 
and we got 5.32 and so it changed a little bit but uh, in any case I'm going to add another LED right there change the load and so you got to wire it in the right direction for it to light up and so these are brand new LEDs like I said before I forgot to lower the current I had 38 I had that going through a couple LEDs in an earlier video and uh, so I just threw them away they're, they're probably dim now whenever you use them but uh, in any case there you can see we held the current even with the changing loads that's the main thing that's what makes it a current source and uh, technically it's a current sink but you can still call it a current source because you have a set amount of current that's what uh, people do so pretty sure I covered everything always make sure you turn off the uh, multimeter especially get it off a of measured current if there's a power button and uh, safer to have it to measure voltage than current because no current really runs through the meter when you measure voltage but uh, too much current through the meter when you're measuring current will uh, blow a fuse but in any case that's it for this video make sure you check out one of the other ones I'm posting click like subscribe the bell all that donate patreon if you can I have a link down in the description that helps out the most but just watching the videos helps out a ton so thanks for that I'll see you in the next video